Harbor Center Port Terminal Incorporated, here known as Harbor. The fair market value of the 10 hectares is said to be 1.75 billion pesos. Harbor is also owned by Romero. Harbor is a corporation that operates harbor facilities in the project site. The Ramos administration gave it the 10 hectares in exchange for 60% of the voting shares in the corporation. But using anomalous methods, Romero was able to dilute the government share with the result that the majority voting shares now belong to him. In short, Romero not merely reneged on the contract, but is in the process of becoming the owner of public land consisting of 79 hectares of reclaimed land plus 10 hectares of land valued at 1.75 billion pesos plus the right to reclaim 150 hectares of reclaimed land plus he effectively owns Harbor Port Terminal. The 3 billion peso question is, has Congress passed any law authorizing the transfer of these public lands to Romero? Answer, no. Therefore, the transfers of these public lands are unconstitutional, illegal, invalid, and criminal. Malversation of reclaimed lands. In view of these allegations, I respectfully move the Senate to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the criminal and civil liabilities of the developer, Regis Romero II, owner of R2 Holdings Inc., as well as its subsidiary corporations, R2 Builders Inc. and Harbor Center Port Terminal Inc., and his cohorts, and to identify the public officials criminally liable under the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, Section 2, which provides in paragraph E. It is a crime to cause any undue injury to any party including the government, or giving any private party any unwarranted benefits, advantage, or preference in the discharge of its official, administrative, or judicial functions through manifest partiality, evident bad faith, or gross inexcusable negligence. Shortly, I shall fi file a bill defining a special crime to be known as, quote, malversation of reclaimed lands, unquote, when any public officer aids, cooperates with, or otherwise consents to the transfer of reclaimed lands in favor of any private corporation without a law passed by Congress authorizing any such transfer of title. The penalty should be identical with a penalty for plunder, reclusion perpetua to death. In seeking this inquiry, I am well aware of the 1991 case of Benzon versus Senate Blue Ribbon Committee, where the Supreme Court ruled that after a case had been filed in court, the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee could no longer conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the same subject matter. Last August 5, I learned from a news item that a case was filed in the Supreme Court. Chavez versus NHA, Regis Romero II and his three corporations, praying the court to declare that the project and all agreements related to it are null and void for being unconstitutional. However, despite this Chavez case, I respectfully submit that there is nothing to prevent the Senate from conducting an inquiry. The Benson and Chavez cases differ in one important aspect the ratio de decidendi, or the basic reason for the decision in the Benzon case was the purely private nature of the transaction being questioned. By contrast, here, the transaction sought to be investigated involves public lands and public officials. Accordingly, the ratio de decidendi in Benzon does not apply. And because of this distinctive distinction between the two cases, Congress may exercise its constitutional prerogative to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation, not only to determine the legality of the project, but also to identify the persons who have incurred criminal liabilities as a result of the project. Therefore, I move, Mr. President, that this speech should be referred for an inquiry in aid of legislation to the following committees public accountability, environment and natural resources, public works, and government corporations and public enterprises. I believe that the interpolation period for the speech of Senator 
Biazon follows immediately after this speech, and um, on Monday, we will begin with the interpolation and the speech of Senator Angara. So unfortunately, for those who may have to raise questions on this speech, my interpolation period will probably take place next week, or maybe even week after next. No, I prefer, uh, unless there are very urgent questions that cannot be delayed, I would prefer for my interpolation period to follow that of Senator Angara because I fear that it might be an abuse of um, civility if I were to insist on my own interpolation period preceding his. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, if I may be a Mr. President, if I may be allowed, I would like to point out that a typographical error which I read into the records has to be corrected. This falls under the heading today, the scandalous R2 builders case. The first sentence reads, sometime in March 1999, then President Ramos authorized, etc. This has to be corrected because Mr. Ramos, who assumed the presidency until under highly suspicious circumstances, and the suspicions have grown stronger over the years, this kind of a president was in office during 1992 to 98. So it cannot be possible that this is March 99. I will consult my own original sources and um, signify to the Secretariat what the proper date is. On another point concerning the rules of our Senate, I have to beg permission to act pursuant to Section 15, which in effect provides that a measure shall be referred to not more than two committees, provided that a motion for referral to a third committee shall be referred to the Committee on Rules. But the, first, the first two mentioned committees in my speech are the following, public accountability, environment, and natural resources. Therefore, to comply with the rules of the Senate, I will now move that The matter should be referred to a third committee. Automatically, this motion will have to be referred to the Committee on Rules, the third committee being Public Works. Although I believe government, government corporations and public enterprises would also have a very strong interest, unfortunately, under Section 15, I am limited to at most only three committees, and therefore I make the proper motion to refer this measure to the third committee that I have already mentioned. All right. The President. Uh, Senator Enrile. Uh, Mr. President, the historical record uh, of the Senate is to the effect that uh, a similar uh, case was referred uh, to the Blue Ribbon Committee and to the Committee on Government Owned and Controlled Corporations and Public Enterprises. In fact, uh, the report, uh, if you'll recall, Mr. President, I think you were the chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee at the time, was prepared by the uh, Committee on Government uh, Owned and Controlled Corporations and Public Enterprises. And so, uh, with uh, due respect to the uh, suggestion of the distinguished lady, Senator, may I, uh, with her permission, uh, propose an amendment with respect to the referral that it should be referred. Uh, likewise, to the Blue Ribbon Committee and to the Committee on uh, Government Owned and Controlled Corporations, PEA being the sole authority under the law to authorize to re reclaim uh, lands in this country. Thank you. And it's a uh, government corporation. That is correct, although I will have to emphasize that under the administrative code, which even I, sitting as a member of the board of directors of the PEA, 
overlooked. Under the administrative code, it is actually DNR which makes decisions on whether reclaimed land can be sold at all, notwithstanding the charter of the PEA. It has to give its consent. But, Senator Enrile, just to prevent you from reaching your destination, <laughs> which I know is going to have a negative effect on me, um, I have no objection. I will therefore move, Mr. President, I will amend my motion to read as follows. I move that this speech should be referred for an inquiry in aid of legislation to the following two committees, public accountability and government corporations and public enterprises. And further, I move that referral to the third committee, environment and natural resources, should be referred to the Committee on Rules. Mr. Mr. President. Uh, President uh, just uh, a matter of uh, remark uh, for the information of the body. I think this is an opportune time for this uh, uh, Senate and Congress itself to revisit this uh, issue in the light of uh, the decision of the Supreme Court uh, in the Chavez uh, uh, versus uh, PEA Amari, uh, where uh, in, in, in effect uh, the, all the reclaimed lands in, uh, uh, along the uh, Bay Shore, of, uh, the, along the Dewey Boulevard, uh, done by uh, PEA Amari, uh, PEA rather, had been declared uh, uh, un, uh, not, uh, not open to dispo disposition by the government. And I would like, I'm saying this because uh, there is a law that authorized the sale of reclaimed land, and that is the very charter creating uh, the public estate authority. And I think it's time that uh, the Senate and uh, Congress itself will revisit this in order to address this problem because this will involve a lot of uh, uh, financial institutions of the government that had uh, in good faith uh, lent money to the reclamation of uh, these lands along the Dewey Boulevard. Mr. President. Uh, Senator Biasan is yes. recognized. With the permission of uh, the lady uh, from Iloilo. Mr. President, uh, even before uh, we may uh, uh, make a, a final decision on which committees are going to be involved here, may I uh, interject? Uh, Mr. President, the PAA had been involved in the disposition of public lands. First, it was the disposition of the stock farms in Montelupa. Second, the disposition of uh, the land in the Amari. And the third is the disposition of land, as now referred to uh, basically by the lady from Iloilo. And this is this area surrounding the uh, North Harbor and uh, the Smoky Mountains, Mr. President. In all of those three instances, the major justification for the disposition was uh, housing, Mr. President. As a matter of fact, uh, the disposition of the public lands in uh, uh, Muntinlupa, the stock farms, uh, uh, resulted in the relocation of many uh, squatters, not only uh, in Muntinlupa itself or along the rails, but including the more than 5,000 uh, squatter families that used to surround this building and the building of the Philippine National Bank, uh, where more than 5,000 were relocated to Dasmarinas, not Dasmarinas, but uh, Paliparan, all under the uh, directions of the PEA. Again, the major justification in the disposition of uh, the land, the reclaimed land in uh, the North Harbor uh, to R2 builders, Mr. President, was the justification that, uh, number one, the Smoky Mountains will be developed 
And indeed, there is now a developed uh, medium rise building there by six floors where 2,500 families that are now housed in the temporary uh, buildings, uh, buildings uh, built by R2 builders inside uh, the port area, the North Arbor port area, Mr. President. Up to now, this, uh, this temporary housing is still uh, accommodating not only now 2,500 families, because since uh, the inception of this project, Yung, nanganak na, yung, nangan, yung mga anak nung mga inilipat, eh doon na rin tumitira ngayon. So ngayon ho, more than 2,500 families na ang nandoon. While the uh, six-story uh, building, Mr. President, built for a re-relocation of these 2,500 families are not yet occupied. Although that building had, had been there for, what, more than six years. And I will agree to the uh, implied uh, statement that this contract, Mr. President, was perfected under the administration of former President Ramos. Because uh, the project had been initiated, I think, uh, even during the 9th Congress. Perfected under the 10th Congress. And so therefore, Mr. President, uh, the lady is correct that uh, uh, the, the, the uh, contract might have been perfected before 1999. But what the point I'm saying, Mr. President, is maybe the third, the third uh, committee to who it's this uh, issue may be referred to would be the Urban Planning and Housing Committee, Mr. President. Thank you. I appreciate the gentleman's concern, but I have a motion on the table and I will request action on the motion as it was stated. Uh, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, uh, I have no objections to the uh, referrals. Uh, However, uh, considering that the interpolation, peer diff interpolation, has yet to uh, take place, perhaps we can uh, hold in abeyance the referral to the committees already suggested, uh, manifested, until after the interpolation has been completed. Perhaps, Mr. President, if I may, I can just there, therefore move in the view of the remarks of the majority leader that this speech should be referred to public accountability and to government corporations and public enterprises and then just leave the question of my motion for a referral to a third committee on the table until after the interpolation or during the interpolation period. All right. That is in order. All right. So... The, uh, my understanding is that the chair's understanding is that the interpolation can take place on Monday or sometime next week. That is correct. Opa. And um, just for clarity in our journal, I move that this speech should be referred for an inquiry in aid of legislation to the following committees, Public Accountability, 